Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 42 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Hope you guys brought your towels, because we've got a really cool setup today. We're going to be finishing up the Uber Miner. That's right, we've got uh, what's hoping to be a pretty solid build. So I'm just jumping down into my uh, area down here, and I'm getting the rest of the things prepared before we start building this. So the first thing I want to do is bump up the increase in power output of my resident energy cell. Because we guys, uh, we, we bumped this up to the Enderium version, it can input and output a maximum of 10,000 RF per tick, which is somewhere around 1,000 build craft. Uh, uh, energy units per tick, which is a lot of power. A lot of power. I'm not even going to kid. Uh, so we're pretty excited for that. I'm um, also checking on... Uh, oh, don't have much by way of uh, Pete coming in yet, but that's okay. It's probably zipping around somewhere. I do also want to check on while I'm here. Before we really kick this thing into gear, I want to make sure we're doing all right on power. So I'm going to run over and take a look. Oh yeah, look, we're low on charcoal here. So let's turn this thing back to wood mode and turn it off of charcoal mode. That's probably why we're nearly out of peat, because uh, I would wager we ran out of charcoal, and then it switched over to peat, and now it's back on a charcoal, so we're just going to flip this guy back to wood mode here. Let me request wood. Well, it doesn't really matter how many I get. One should be plenty, actually. So you're doing what? You're being fed with charcoal at the moment. You're okay. Um, really got to sort out my power use situation, but I'm sure we'll come up with something. So you're here. Ah, uh, see, it's, oh, you know what, this is still working all right. Are you still set to, uh, keep this thing fed with wood? Oh, you are. Okay, cool. So I don't have to change anything. You know, I forgot I still had that thing set up to, you know. So even though it's using up the charcoal that it's making over there, that's okay. If I wanted to, I could turn this mode off, but I'll leave it as is. And uh, everything's working out all right. So we're good. No need to panic. So let's take a look over at our mining construction thing that we set up earlier. Uh, what I'm going to need is take you. Switch out my armor again. I was down in the nether getting a couple things. So I wanted to have a decent armor. And look what I made. So it's not a fully uh, sized chunk. I'm a little short on a couple of the resources we're going to need to bump this guy out to a full 16. But for now, this is sufficient. And if we take a look at this, uh, let's see. Oops. Where's my key bindings? Yes, it should be. There we go. So this guy is basically going to eat to the bottom of the world. So I know you guys are dying to find out how I'm going to move this. Uh, it's funny, I've been actually like reading the comments on a couple of the videos that I posted a little bit earlier, because uh, as you guys know, I have a little bit of a backlog going on. And everybody's like, how is he going to move the mining well? He doesn't have anything that can move it. He doesn't have any frames type machines. Or do I? We're going to find out. I'll be back in a minute once I've got some of the preparatory work that we're going to need to put into making this thing. All right, guys, so I've kind of been purposely hiding this from you for a little while because I've been really excited to show it to you, and I wanted to make sure I kind of had everything I needed uh, to get ready before uh, we do it. So I think I'm finally ready to show you guys what we can do using the newer versions of MFFS, the Modular Force Field System mod. Pretty sure I'm making this battery correctly? Of course I'm not. All right, so what do I have to make to get a battery? Ah, tin item casings, okay. So let's do that. That should get me what I need. There we go. Two rechargeable batteries. So the first thing I want to make from MFFS, the Modular Force Field System mod, is um, Modular Force Field System uses a type of energy called Fortron. And what Fortron energy is basically derived from some kind of energy source. You can use industrial craft power. You can use redstone flux. We're going to use redstone flux because we already have that up and running. Um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, use uh, a coercion deriver. This is the thing that's going to uh, generate your energy. For this, we're going to need a focus matrix, which is a special item here. I'm going to get a couple of these because I know I'm going to need a few. So I'm just going to get like that many for now and I might need a little bit more later. So the first step is building the coercion driver. So let's do this. Uh, so a battery, one focus matrix, and some steel. One, two, gets us the coercion driver. That's step one. Step two is the Fortron capacitor. This is the uh, block that will basically be storing your Fortron energy. So uh, let's see, uh, Fortron capacitor. So we're gonna need four of these guys and four of these guys, and we've got the Fortron capacitor. Let's take a look at how these things work. Let's go somewhere that it's gonna be easy for me to demonstrate. Should probably sleep through the night in preparation for this. There we go. And 
I don't know how I got these mining pipes, but I want to destroy them. Where's my garbage can? I usually have one around here somewhere. Alright, I'm going to get rid of this thing in a minute. We'll just toss it back here for now. So how do we use this thing? So basically all we need to do is connect up our Fortron capacitor and our coercion driver. Coercion driver accepts energy, like I said. So I'm going to demonstrate how this thing works right over here by hooking up the coercion driver, okay? He's gonna just sit there and derive energy from the energy coming in from the redstone flux. So all you have to do is turn it on with a redstone signal or click on this little button here and you'll see it's running and it's generating energy right now. And it just filled up its own little internal buffer. And and you can see it's happening and just doing its little thing. All right, the Fortron capacitor is a storage unit that can go anywhere kind of nearby. It has a bit of a range. Uh, transmission range is 15 blocks at the moment. You can upgrade that with some of the uh, upgrade slots over here, which I'll show you in a little bit. And what this guy does is he basically can receive energy from the coercion driver um, or transmit energy to other machines. So basically uh, in his default mode is he's just gonna try and equalize uh, the spread of Fortron energy with all the machines. So it'll kind of draw from this one and you know keep all the machines balanced with energy. And again, Again, apply a redstone signal or hit the red button here and you'll see the energy starting to flow and building up on the internal capacitor of the Fortron capacitor. Cool? So this guy is now getting a lot of energy, storing it, and doing all kinds of cool stuff. So this guy is producing 10 uh, kiloliters. Fortron is actually a liquid, so you can store it in tanks and you can pipe it with uh, fluids and stuff, but I recommend going with uh, this method that we're doing right here. Uh, but if you wanted to, I guess you could like transport it with tesseracts. That would probably work. Uh, so we're producing 10 kiloliters right here. Uh, this guy's ability to transfer rate is 250 liters uh, transmission rate. Uh, yes. So if you wanted to and make it speed up a little bit, you could create um, some speed upgrades. So let's take a look at that. Speed modules. All right. So that's uh, some focus matrix and some redstone. Let's just get a couple of those to demonstrate what a speed module will look like. And I want a couple of them. So I'm going to go with that much. So if we threw this in here, uh, we could go ahead and see that we're now able to transform 450, okay, 250, 450. So you get an extra 50 per speed module in here. So it's just going to make it be able to transfer a little bit faster. Now the one downside is that um, that thing is also going to cause a little bit of energy loss. So if I were to change the frequency here so that it's no longer linked to this machine, for example, even though he's still generating energy, right? Different frequency means they're not gonna um, share energy with each other. See how there's a small amount of energy loss? That's because I have speed modules in there. If you don't have speed modules in, it's just a basic flat energy. So just keep in mind that, you know, that speed module, being able to speed up that machine takes some power. Now let's get on to the real trick. And that is going to be, how are we going to move our frame quarry? Well, for that, we're going to need the following item, the force manipulator. This guy is going to need a couple focus matrix and a motor from Calcavia Core. So we're going to need to get ourselves some redstone comparators, some steel ingots, and some iron. Okay, so let me get some quartz and some smooth stone, and we should be in good shape. Quartz, right? Four quartz, yes. And smooth stone, and I should be good on sticks and redstone. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Let's see if we can make this thing. Force manipulator. So we're gonna need four redstone comparators to make ourselves a motor. Uh, I need iron. I know you guys are excited for this. Trust me, I'm very excited to show you this because it's really cool. Uh, let's see. Now we should be able to put together a motor and then finally our force manipulator. This guy basically allows uh, the movement of other blocks and I'm going to show you how it works. All he needs is a bit of energy. So we're going to hook it up to the Fortron capacitor here. We're going to switch this guy back to frequency zero, which means that he can start sharing energy with machines. And like I said, he's going to keep a balance of energy between all machines um, in his current mode. So he's going to start um, you know, putting energy into the force manipulator a little bit at a time. Why don't I get a couple more items here and be right back. 
All right, so what we're gonna need are the following. First, we have to tell this thing what type of area we wanna move. In this case, I wanna move a cube styled area. You can also go with a sphere or a tube or a pyramid or a cylinder. There's a bunch of different ones and you can even create your own custom field size, but I'm gonna go with something that's called a cube mode, okay? And for that, I'm just gonna have uh, nine focus matrix right here like so. And uh, because I'm going ahead and using a lot of these things, I'm gonna go ahead and just create a few more. I just need a little bit more redstone. Let me just get another stack of that stuff. All right, now um, to go along with this, we can also adjust the size of the field, which determines what items and blocks are gonna be moved uh, using the following two things, translation and scale module. Scale module uh, makes it move a larger area and translation module moves the kind of the, the size or the, uh, the, the where the area is going to be at. It's a little hard to describe in words, so I'm just going to have to kind of show you guys as we go along here. So let me get a few more of these because I'm definitely going to need a lot of them. Uh, so let's get a couple uh, scale modules first, okay? I'm just going to get like 20. That sounds like a good number. And then uh, translation modules just is uh, an upgrade of scale modules, so I'll get 10 of those. And you know what? That, that looks pretty good for now. So let's go down. So the force manipulator. This is a complicated looking interface. Don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna break it down for you and show you guys exactly how it works. And we're gonna do it a little test and a, a proof of concept, if you will, down here in the basement. And then we're gonna pick everything up, move it over to our frame quarry, and we're gonna have a pretty powerful mining system in place. So basically what this thing does is it can take a shape or an area and every block that's in that area can be moved in a certain direction okay in order to determine that area first we needed to define the size which is the red slot in the center the module that's where we're going to place our cube mode okay now that's all well and good the other thing you're going to want to do is see this little redstone dust here i'm just going to switch it to a cube for a minute and what we're going to see is we're going to see a graphical representation of what block is going to be moved and in what direction okay so right now that guy's set up like that he's moving in that direction if you want to change the direction we can do that and hit it with a wrench and it'll be able to change different directions and that kind of cool stuff right so let's let's keep it like that where it's moving a block in that direction so the block that's currently being highlighted is what's going to be moved okay now if we increased the scale of it and we want to scale up then we would see the following okay because of the scale module, one scale module above it is going to make um, the block that's currently highlighted and one above it be moved, okay? Scale module again in there, and now we've got three blocks being moved, okay? So that's pretty much how you can define your size and shape. Uh, if we put scale modules on the left side, what it's gonna do is move um, the block that's also on the left side. So let's see which one that is, there we go, okay? So if we wanted to move something like this, See, now we're moving a very large number of blocks because we're moving all these different scales. Now what's cool about this, let's go ahead and take these out and I'm just gonna leave the scale module on the up, okay? You might be wondering why there's two ups and two downs and two backs and two rights. Well, that's because you can also put translation modules in there. What a translation module is gonna do is it's going to allow you to adjust where it's being moved. So by having a translation module up, it just moves that whole field up one. So where before, without the translation module, it was moving this block and the one above it, now it's moving the one above it and the one above that. Okay, so we can translate this entire field shape. If we want to bump it up three more, it's going to move some blocks that are potentially all the way up there. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring this down to right there. Okay, we're going to put cobblestone here for a demonstration. You ready? So all we have to do to move this thing is apply a redstone signal to the block or click on the little thing. But let's go ahead and do it with redstone because, you know, I like redstone. We can also click on the thing in there, but I, I really want you guys to see this. So let's do it, you ready? Here goes. Ta-da! Now you might notice that it's continuing to move the block. Look at that. Uh, why would that be? Well, I'll demonstrate for you. The reason for that is uh, it's currently in anchor mode. What that means is every time it moves the block, it's going to remember where it moved to, and now it's gonna move that um, continue forward. Now anchor mode is gonna draw more energy. So uh, the further ahead it is, the more energy it's gonna cost. So right now it's costing quite a bit of energy to do that move. Um, if we flip this lever again, I don't even know if we have enough energy, there we go. So now it's gonna cost three kiloliters. So every time you wanna move it forward and continue to focus on that anchor position, uh, it's gonna cost more and more energy every time it moves. If you want to reset it, hit the um, gold clock here, and it'll now move back in its original position, okay? And if you don't want it to do anchor mode, you can just change this by clicking right here. Now it's no longer in anchor mode, okay? So if we were to, for example, move these things, 
See how it moved? Okay, but now it can't move any further because it's trying to move the ones that are above it into that slot. Pretty cool, right? So we can really use this to kind of shape exactly what area we want to move and then move it all at once. So let me show you one more component of this. We're going to get um, the scale on the left and right there um, so that we can see that. So now we should be seeing it moving a big wide area, right? One other setting that I changed earlier was redstone block mode. What this is doing is it's determining what um, the appearance, so I'm going to put it back in block mode what appearance we're going to see with this. So in block mode, it shows you every block that it could potentially move, whether or not something's in that space or not. Okay. So if I put cobblestone here, for example, we're going to see the cobblestone and all the air blocks around it move. If we switch this guy into redstone dust mode, it's only going to show you the blocks that are going to be moved and it won't show you the air blocks. It won't highlight those. So even though it could be moving that whole area because of the translation modules and the scale modules we've got put in, it's only going to show me the blocks themselves that are actually being moved. It's a very nice way to see it. So if I put another piece of cobblestone here and here, we'll see that they will both also be moved because it's still moving the same area. It's just not showing it unless you put it in the square mode, which it'll show you everything that's going to potentially be moved as opposed to just the blocks that are placed down that could be moved. Okay. So we're going to use this to do some cool stuff. So uh, to pick these things up, you're going to want to use a wrench and shift click them and it's going to spew out items all over the place and that'll be a good time for everybody. So come here, you guys, we're going to check out how much fun we can have. I will meet you guys back at the little quarry that we've got set up because now it's time to build something very cool. All right, guys, so let's get this set up. So first off, we're going to want to get the uh, Fortron capacitor and coercion driver placed down and ready to go. So the coercion driver, we're just going to flip on. OK, it's going to start generating energy and it's going to drain the power directly out of the Tesseract. That's why I placed it right next to it. Right next to that, I'm going to place the Fortron capacitor and we're going to let you start building up your internal buffer. So he's draining energy between the two devices here. He's getting his power. And like I said, he has a distance of about 15 blocks. He could transmit power to and from. But I think, uh, you know, the block setup we have right now should be sufficient. And then the final component that we're going to place down is the force manipulator. Okay, so I could really place this kind of wherever I want. From I've always been kind of placing it like above this when I've been testing this in single player, like up here and then having it kind of reach down. But that almost seems unnecessary to me. I mean, you can really have this be any size and shape you want. So I'm going to try it out. I haven't done it this way before, but I'm going to keep it right down here. So we're going to start scaling this out to specify exactly the blocks that are going to be moved. And I'm probably going to need more translation modules. So as a result, I brought myself um, an extra crafting table so that I can craft a few things. Might even want to request myself a few more diamonds, redstone, or something like that. We'll see. Maybe I'll get like 10 more of you, redstone. We'll get like 30 more, and we'll even get some more steel coming our way. Cool. So let's start scaling this thing out. So first I'm going to flip it into block mode so that I can easily see everything that's being moved by this whole setup um, and what direction it's going to be moved in. That's the most important part. So I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out which way it's going to be trying to move things. All right, first, before you'll see anything, you have to put your cube mode in. Now we should be able to see what blocks are going in, and then I can try rotating it into the correct direction. So I don't think that's the correct way. I think that's going to be like up and down. Yeah. Let's see what way that is. It's a little hard sometimes to figure out what direction you're trying to rotate it into, um, but you can play with it a little bit and get the hang of it eventually. I think maybe if I rotate it like that. There we go. Let me try clicking it on the top here. There we go. That looks pretty good. I think now we're rotated correctly. So I want it to go that way. Cool. We got it. Nice. So now let's get some um, scale modules. So if I wanted to test this, I think that front would be that way. Oh, front's that way. So this is actually back then, right? I think what I can do, let me check something out. So one option we have, instead of um, having these directions like front, back, left, and right, if we click this button here, the compass, what we'll see now is that it changes to north, west, east, and south. So what I can do here is have absolute direction. So that's north, right? So if I wanted to um, scale this out to the north, so let's see what happens. So if I wanted to say one, two, three, four, five blocks to the north, all I have to do is put five scale modules in the north directional piece and we should see this whole area is going to be moved now there we go that's what we're talking about i also want to grab one two blocks to the south so scale the south a little bit so that should also grab there i believe 
Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We're going to scale uh, down one so that we grab the flooring, so everything that's underneath. And we're going to probably want to scale up, right? So we're going to want to scale up at least one, two, three. Let's go three for now. So scale up three. Okay. So all you have to do is wait a little bit. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And then uh, we can scale, what is it? Is it west? No, east. So let's scale east. We're going to want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we're running on like 15. Let's, let's do 15. So scale east, 15. That's why I knew we were going to need a few more scale modules. All right, so we're definitely going to need some more of these. OK. So 15 to the east. Now, should we be moving this whole darn thing? Yeah, we are. So once you get like a really large size, this is when you're gonna wanna switch it from the square block mode um, to the dust mode. And then you can see exactly what's actually gonna be moved. Yeah, look at that. It's grabbing everything, perfect. So it shouldn't grab this block. Perfect. Now those with a keen eye may have noticed that I have an extra force manipulator in my inventory. Why would that be? And the reason for that is basically there's pretty much one block in the entire game, well maybe bedrock too, there's maybe two blocks, that a force manipulator can't move, and that is itself. So this guy is not going to be able to move itself. So when he moves everything, and by the way we want to take it off anchor mode, when he moves everything he's going to stay put. So everything else is going to move, and he's going to stay exactly where he is, even though he's inside the field. Okay. So what we're going to want to do is have another force manipulator here um, that will uh, be responsible for moving things. So let's get him set up. So you, I'm going to turn off this so that we don't see anything moving from him. And then we're going to turn this one on. And you know what? I, did I forget cube mode? I did. But that's all right. I have enough stuff to make it. cube mode thing. You're going to go here. And then what direction are you moving in? All right, I want you to rotate a little bit. That's probably the direction I want you to move, right? Nice. Um, and what I think I'll have here is just maybe a lever so that he's always ready to go. I'm going to activate this in a minute here. But so basically what will happen is everything will move, right? Um, I just want to translate this guy translation module front which is now north so now what it should do is it should take this block that's right here and move it forward right can you please do something to make sure I'm doing this right maybe not translation module let's see All oh, right, we'll want to put it on dust mode, right? So translation module north. That's why, because I didn't have the dust. I had it. I had it on dust mode instead of block mode. Since there's no block there, it wouldn't have shown. So what'll happen is when this whole area moves, this will um, be moved. Okay, um, he'll be moved forward. This guy will stay put, so he'll wind up basically being here. And then when that occurs, this guy will push him forward one back to his original position. Cool. I hope so. So let's, you ready to give this a try? Like, I'm ready to give this a try. All right, guys, let's cross our fingers and see if this thing works. You ready? Here goes nothing. Engage. Everything moved. Nice. And we can see here our mining wells are starting to mine, which is exactly what we would expect. Cool. They're going a little slower than I thought they would, actually. That's interesting. We're going to have to see about that. But they're definitely cruising. That's a good sign. It means we did something right. And let me make sure. There we go. Cool. Look at that. So over here, remember, uh, this is what I was telling you about. So everything moved except this thing. He can't be moved. But all we have to do is apply a redstone signal here. And he'll move him back into position. All right. So that sound means that something is in the way. So it's basically this thing saying, I can't move something into this position because there's something in the way which is fine. So we'll leave that as is. So let's come down here. So the only downside about this is it seems to be leaving these. In previous versions of Buildcraft, these did not get left uh, when we did the frame moving thing. And for some reason it is now. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, so we're going to have to 
figure out a way to get rid of them. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it is a little bit ugly looking. So we might need to be a little concerned, but not hugely concerned. And it's funny because it doesn't happen on all of them. Look, there's like some that were left and some that weren't. So it's like it, it couldn't make up its mind whether or not it wanted to leave them there. So it's just random. Um, and in testing this in single player mode, it, it's definitely random because sometimes some are left and sometimes some aren't. So it just hit bedrock. So now we're ready to move this whole thing again. So all we have to do is click the thing and boom, everybody moves and he gets moved into a new position. Nice, look at that, it's cruising. So what I would definitely like to try first is turning off the coercion driver. I don't know how much energy it's drawing. Um, I'm a little concerned maybe it's drawing too much energy on the coercion driver. No, it doesn't seem to be drawing that much because that really didn't increase the speed of these too much. That's okay though. I'm not worried about the speed right now. I'm just worried about it working, especially with the whole movement mechanic. So you're bringing in power, your configuration is receiving energy. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing and we should be getting a ton of resources. Like just look at this stuff. Now, this might not work. Let's find out. Yes, so here's one thing that I tested in single player and discovered. This block doesn't like being moved. Um, a way to fix this, and I have a solution to automate this, um, is to break it and replace it. And then the only other thing is we need to have our mana battery back here, or some kind of mana battery, you know. I think I've got one laying around. It's probably being charged, but we have to recharge it now. Like, it, it's, it's out of battery again. So, it's not the end of the world. We will have to come up with a solution. Um, I already kind of have one planned out. It's really pretty simple. Um, Spoiler alert, mining turtle. Break and replace every time it moves. Real easy, right? Uh, how are you doing, mana battery? All right, you're good. Cool. Uh, the good thing is you don't need to have um, a charge on the receiving end of the portal. So I should be able to go through the portal now and things will work. And how's this doing? We should be getting a ton of items zipping along here. Oh yeah, look at all that stuff. So we probably just hit bedrock. There we go. Uh, so if I charge this guy up again, you and you go. Now it's working again. So what I'm thinking is I just set up a turtle or something, but we also need to set up um, a power source over there. So we're gonna have to look at doing that pretty soon. Shouldn't be too big a deal. I'll probably just build it out over here. That might not be a terrible idea. Um, do I have... Builder's wand, I do, good. Just bump this out a little bit, what do you say? That should work. And then I can build, um, you know, another light nexus here that'll charge this guy up every time he moves. So, hey guys, I think we have a really nice mining system. I just wanna see if I can make it run a little bit quicker. Yeah, it's a little bit slower than I want it to be right now, but like I said, not the end of the world. So again, we just have to break. Uh, and we won't have to do the crystal thing. Crystal, I think, would only be needed if it's a battery that would be charging it. Just a little bit of juice, because I don't want to waste power. So let's see. I do have this outputting at 10, right? Oh, he's like out of power. What's going on here? Maybe I'm draining a lot of juice. That's probably why it's running so slow, to be honest with you. All right, let's give him some time to recharge. Maybe I'm just killing it with the Fortron stuff. All right, I've got an idea. Let's get ourselves, how am I for quartz? I have 262 lapis, I have 26 times nine. I have about the same amount. Let's just get ourselves, lapis is probably easier to get. Let me get a stack of this. So lapis and quartz are going to significantly increase the efficiency of your coercion driver. It's going to use the same amount of power, but it's going to create a lot more. So what I'm thinking is if we throw this in there, it might drain less juice from the system. So let's, well, it's off anyway right now. So, you know, it probably just killed it with the uh, mining wells and everything else. I do have to figure out a way to figure out how much energy this thing is draining. Why don't I go figure that out? I think there's an item I can make for that. All right, so it looks like all I needed is an Electrum gear and one of these dudes, and then I should be able to make a multimeter. And this might tell me how much energy draw is occurring. 
but we're gonna see. I'm not sure exactly how it works on machines, but and if it'll work on the MFFS machines, but it should tell me, yeah, average distribution, 150. You're pretty good. So we should have lots of power coming in here, right? You guys building up again? You guys are creating energy, right? Yep, lots of it too. All right. One thing I'm concerned about is maybe the mining wells continue to draw energy when they're off and not running. If that's the case, then I've got a little bit of work to do to prevent that from happening, which shouldn't be too bad, honestly. I should be able to pull that off. Um, but we'll have to just do a little something to make it occur. Let's see. Average distribution, 53. So you guys actually draining power? I think they are. I think they're draining power when they're not running. Interesting. So yeah, I can't read it off that. Can I read it off this? No, I didn't think so. Okay, well that's good to know. So if we go back through here now, don't worry, I've got solutions to all these problems that I'm running into now. <laughs> Tested this in a single player world with a creative energy cell, can you tell? Um, all right, so that's not a problem. We can fix that, guys. Well, we're going to have to wait till next episode to fix it, because believe it or not, we've already hit the wrapping up point. This is one of those episodes where this thing just flew by because I was having so much fun. Uh, this is the real test now. If we come down here and our cell's draining of power, um, it means we're definitely using it while the things aren't running. Oh, yeah, look at that. It's dead. All right, so what we need to do here is basically we're going to use a redstone signal, and we're going to disable the transmission of power, and then it should start running again. So we're going to have to automatically turn off the Tesseract when we don't want to mine. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, guys, for now, though, uh, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. I'm going to set up another row of steam dynamos here um, and see if we can, you know, get some more steam power coming in and helping to keep this thing powered up. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next episode to continue work on our Uber quarry. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I think personally, I'm really pleased with how it turned out so far. Uh, these force manipulators are even cooler than what you've already seen. There's some other really neat stuff that it can do that I haven't shown you yet. So you're going to have to wait uh, to some future episodes to see some of the other cool things that force manipulators can do. And oh yeah, by the way, the MFFS mod, the modular force field system, can also do force fields. I mean, it doesn't just do this. It's, it's a force field mod that can also create force fields and all kinds of other stuff. So we're going to definitely be getting into MFFS more because um, I've been playing around with it a lot in testing and single player and preparation for this episode. And it's just so cool. Trust me. All right, guys. Dial 20 setting off. Take it easy.